What's up guys, Kevin James here. Um, I'm doing a quick tutorial on how to um, properly warp your tracks in Ableton Live for either DJing or re-editing. First thing you want to do is grab a track from up here. Now, you have two options as far as how you want your track to be warped. You have either beats or repitch. I choose beats. Uh, basically, it's like um, master tempo on a CDJ or key lock. Repitch, you just repitch as you would on a um, turntable. Okay, now one of the first things you got to do is you got to set the start of the track basically like you would uh, a cue point on a CDJ, which would be the first beat. Uh, when you see the magnifying glass, that means you're going to zoom into the waveform. So you click and hold, and I'll move your mouse down to zoom in or up to zoom out. We're going to zoom in here. Now you want to set that right on the first beat, which would be right about here. You want to keep it on the zero axis so you don't get any um, ugly pips, uh, pops, or clicks in there. Uh, now next thing you want to do is uh, I like to go over to make sure everything is pretty much on beat. I like to go to the 5 marker don't be afraid to zoom in set that right on the zero axis there double click on the 5 and that'll keep that locked. Now if you look back over here shows that the BPM is somewhere around 132.86 so we're gonna go over to the top right up here and we are gonna set the BPM to as close to the original as possible which is going to be in this case 132 now that you have the tempo of your master set to the tempo of the track you are beat warping, uh, you want to right click on uh, this 5 marker here and you want to warp 132 BPM from here. Now that will pretty much set the track up for you more or less. Now after I do the 5 I like to double check on the 17. as you can see it's slightly shifting off a bit so you just drag that 17 over once again you want to stay it on keep it on the zero axis I mean it doesn't have to be completely on but the tighter you are when beat warping the tighter your mixing is going to be most songs um, will be pretty much on uh, once you do the warp from here um, but some songs like this one, usually older songs that have been ripped from vinyl, uh, will have some fluctuations in the pitch and and all that. And you know, you just double click to set your warp marker. Now once you get used to doing this, I, I hope I'm not going too fast for you guys, you will be able to do this right on the fly. Um, Although it is nice, you can beat warp all your tracks in advance and you can focus on your mixing versus your beat matching. Um, whether that's cheating or not, that's up to you. And uh, make sure you tighten it all the way up to the end of the track. And there you have it. Um, that song is now beat locked in Ableton Live. Um, you can test your tracks uh, by um, you just hit your play button up here. Now, if you beat matched it right, if you hit this, it should pretty much loop seamlessly. Now what's great about this is now 
I can pretty much remix on the fly. You can also set loops. And there you have it. Um, you have a track beat locked with Ableton Live. Um, this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I hook up Ableton um, to my mixer uh, for mixing live. Uh, there's multiple ways you can do it. Um, I use a M Audio Firewire audio file sound card. That's that bad boy right there. Uh, that has uh, four outputs which will allow me to have two stereo channels. Uh, if you only have a sound card with a standard left and right output, you can still mix two tracks at once, but it's going to be in mono. Now let me show you exactly what I do here. I have line outputs one and two, line outputs three and four. One and two, that goes to my channel one. three and four channel two well on this case channel four that part is simple enough now how to set up Ableton Live to output the channels correctly make sure you have your in and outputs uh, view and enabled with this IO if you click that your inputs and outputs for each track are now available on channel one you want to set your outputs to audio out, external output, and we're going to keep that on one and two. Channel three, same deal. I'm sorry, channel two, same deal. Um, audio out to external output, external output, three and four. Now, if I hit play on this tune, that goes out to my channels 1 and 2 on my mixer. All EQs are controlled right on the mixer versus via software. Now that you have all that stuff set up, you can give it a shot. Go ahead and click play. Channel 1. All EQing will be done right on the mixer. Once again, if you warp your markers right, it'll automatically play it right on bar. So if I click it right before, it's automatically going to kick the next track in right on beat. And I can also restart beats, bring this right to the front. I can select different sections of the track while playing. If I want to go to a breakdown here. There you just mix like normal. Uh, if you guys have any questions, if you can't understand what I'm talking about, if I went too fast. Um, if you couldn't see what I was doing because I'm using a camera, uh, video recording, a monitor, uh, just let me know if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Peace out.